What do smart billionaires use to bulletproof protect their assets? If you have property, bank accounts, yachts, jets, whatever it is that you have, if you want to protect it 100% from any lawsuits, divorce, whatever comes your way to take half of your money or potentially all of your money. This video was inspired by a discussion we had on our private community on the best countries and best structures for bulletproof asset protection. We had an amazing discussion, hundreds of comments on the private community. If you want to join it, check it out in the description below. Now, this is not law advice. This is not tax advice. This is nothing advice. This is from my personal experience, from my personal research, from working with 100 millionaire clients, billionaire clients, what do they do to protect their assets 100% against anything that can happen? The first place that I recommend you look at are the Cook Islands. The Cook Islands is a country that politically belongs to New Zealand. New Zealand is number three in the anti-corruption index, meaning that if you set up an entity in the Cook Islands, specifically a trust in the Cook Islands, and that trust holds your assets that trust then has a company underneath a cook islands llc that llc and that trust as long as you hold property within that trust won't be taken away from you it won't be taken away from you from the new zealand government it won't be taken away from you from anybody that wants to sue you that company the cook islands llc can then have a bank account in Switzerland. We use banks in Switzerland that are not exposed to the US, that are not involved in some money laundering scheme or don't have a shady past. And then you can store your wealth in that bank and potentially receive a small annual return to at least beat inflation. You have the trust in the Cook Islands, which then holds all of your assets. It could be property in the United States, property all over the world. It could be jets, yachts, and obviously bank accounts. The bank account in Switzerland doesn't belong to you specifically, which it can easily be taken away from you. It can easily be seized in case of a lawsuit, whether that's in Switzerland or in Europe or in the United States, because they might have a lawyer, a partner lawyer, partner law firm in Switzerland that could then seize your assets. They can't because it's not a personal bank account. It belongs to a Cook Islands LLC and then to a Cook Islands Trust. If somebody wants to sue you, if somebody wants to take your money, they have to have jurisdiction in the Cook Islands. They can hire a lawyer in Australia or New Zealand to fly to the Cook Islands, but most lawyers won't do that. And on top of that, since the Cook Islands is so specific in protecting client assets, they might even judge that that lawyer or that law firm trying to take your money in Australia or New Zealand doesn't have jurisdiction in the Cook Islands. And if you want to go to the Cook Islands to be able to sue somebody else, that's going to be a 40 hour, 30 hour flight. Nobody's going to take that flight to go to the Cook Islands to not even have jurisdiction there to sue you. It's very easy to set up, very fast to set up. It could take you a couple of days, a couple of weeks to set up the trust, the LLC, the bank account. It's also pretty straightforward. They've made recent improvements. Everything can be done digitally. And if you pick a good lawyer, that can be done very smoothly. The Cook Islands is the absolute best trust jurisdiction. And that is where 100 millionaires, billionaires keep their assets in order to absolutely protect them. Now, if you don't want to go with a Cook Island setup or maybe the price tag of $50,000, $100,000 to set this up is a bit too much, you can also set it up in Nevis. I'm a citizen of St. Kitts and Nevis, Nevis being one of the islands. A Nevis Trust works very similarly to a Cook Islands Trust. That Nevis Trust then can have a Nevis LLC. A lot of people in the US or in Canada own property through their Nevis LLC. And then you can add the aspect of the Nevis Trust on top of that. Nevis is a lot easier to get into. It's a lot easier to find a lawyer that has jurisdiction in Nevis. It's a lot easier to fly to Nevis in case a lawyer or a person wants to sue you or a company wants to sue you. They can fly to Nevis easily from the United States or the UK instead of going all the way to Cook Islands, but it's a lot cheaper. So if you have less assets to protect or if you don't want that thousand percent bulletproof protection, you just want some sort of protection, then setting up a Nevis works really well. Now, it's important to say that the process to set up a Nevis Trust, Nevis LLC, all this process can take multiple months, can be a lot of hassle, a lot of documentation, and a lot harder than setting up Cook Islands Trust, but it's going to be way cheaper. Now, it might not be cheaper always because in the long run, if you do get sued in Nevis, if somebody wants to attack your assets in Nevis, the attorney fees that you will spend protecting your assets in Nevis might run you $50,000, $100,000, which was the same to set up the Cook Islands Trust. So you could just spend it all up front to set up that trust, or you could do it a lot more cheaply and then pay on the long run if you have 
a lawsuit that you need to protect. Now, another jurisdiction that is close to the US that a lot of people set up trust in, but is a lot more corrupt, takes a lot longer time to set up, is not that safe to set up, is Belize. You can set up a company in Belize that might take you a couple of months. You can get banking in Belize. Not that straightforward. Belize also in a lot of blacklists. You can set up a trust in Belize. Belize in general, not that great of a jurisdiction to set up a trust. Way cheaper, but it might end up not protecting your assets. If you have to go to Belize yourself, Belize is quite a dangerous country, a country that is famous for its gangs, for a lot of issues internally. So you might have issues visiting Belize. And overall, not a jurisdiction you want if you're trying to protect multiple millions, potentially tens of millions of dollars. Now, if you're in Europe or you want a setup in Europe, in a European country, you have Hungary. Not woke, low corporate tax, amazing society, beautiful country in general, part of the EU, but they don't want to follow whatever the EU dictates of them. You can set up a trust in Hungary. You can set up a company in Hungary with a 9% corporate tax, very low, comparable to the UAE. And then you could also protect your assets this way. It's a lot cheaper. It's relatively fast to set it up, but obviously much less protection than a Cook Islands trust. The Hungarian trust laws were actually modeled by the Cook Islands trust laws, and they were modernized in many ways. Setting up a trust and then having all your assets within that trust also prevents your children from getting sued in the future. Let's say that you have $100 million, you put it in a trust, you have children, your children inherit your wealth, and knock on wood, your child runs over someone, and that person decides to sue your child, if structured incorrectly, or if you don't do any structure at all, you just give them the $100 million, they could potentially be liable to pay that person millions of dollars, even though it was their fault, but it's your children, you want to protect your children, they could be liable for millions of dollars. They could take the assets that you worked hard for. If you put them in a trust, they're protected, especially a Cook Islands trust, where you could add your family, your children into that trust, and it would be protected against any lawsuits. Or if your children get divorced, multiple decades in the future. They could also be protected because all the assets are in the trust. Now, it's important to note that having a trust offshore in any jurisdiction, having an LLC inside the trust, assets inside that trust does not equate to tax savings. If you're still living in a high tax country, the US, Canada, UK, any high tax country, you cannot claim that your earnings are inside of the trust and therefore you don't need to pay taxes, especially if you're a US citizen or US green card holder. You still need to pay taxes back to the US you still need to pay taxes wherever you live and you need to report that trust. If you're from the US, you need to report that you have an offshore trust, an offshore company, offshore assets, depending on which they are. And sometimes, in some cases, a US court or a court from a high tax Western country can still take your assets even if they are in an offshore trust. If you have a home in Florida, the US can still take that home because it's on US soil, even if it's under a trust in the Cook Islands. So don't use trusts or offshore LLCs for anything illegal, tax evasion, or pretend that, oh, everything's in the trust, therefore nobody can take it. If that country has jurisdiction where your property is, they can still legally go for it. One more strategy that under millionaires and billionaires use to protect their assets is to get a second citizenship, a second passport. They have another country that they can call home. They have another nationality that they can use for banking, for asset protection. You want to check out this video right here for the 12 countries around the world where you can get a second citizenship in as little as three months with an investment. You can invest into a country and then get the nationality of that country, in some cases an amazing nationality, in a very short time with your money. Check them out right here and all the options you have.